Hey everybody, welcome back. Steve from the Pinball Room. And today I'm gonna to talk about the cabinet artwork and like translate artwork and just general artwork for my pinball machine. Uh, not so much on the play field. The play field, I'm still trying to figure out what to do with that. We've got a couple different ideas, but um, I wanna run down just kind of the basics of how I'm going about um, creating the artwork, the tools I'm using, the general process, um, what I'm comfortable with doing versus what I'm not comfortable with doing. And hopefully some of this will be a little bit helpful as you are working on your pinball machine and thinking about it or um, yeah, or just enjoyable to watch. I don't know, like we'll see for whichever reason you're here, but I appreciate you coming in along for the ride. So let's just jump right into it. So this pinball machine, if you've been watching any of my, my series, you know I've been working on this for a couple years. Um, since I've been doing like YouTube videos, if I started like coming up with the, with the play field design and sketching down ideas and stuff in my notebook almost three years ago now. And from the very beginning when I decided um, it was gonna be Led Zeppelin, Again, before I knew that Stern or anybody else was going to put out a Led Zeppelin pinball machine, I had a certain idea of what the artwork would be in my mind, okay, for the cabinet, and that was artwork that looked like um, like this. And oh, guess what? That's the premium version of Led Zeppelin pinball machine by Stern. <laughs> Seriously, though, the artwork they used was here with with uh, um, with the Zeppelin. The kind of like the Hindenburg burning right. It's black and white. This nice bright orange. Um, font, I was going to use a more like Led Zeppelin font, but this is basically what I was planning on doing for mine. Black and white, very different, kind of stark, stick out from the other machines in my in my lineup. And I really like that approach. But then once I saw that Stern did that for the premium, I'm like, well, dang it, that's what I was going to do. I don't want to just like copy them or have everybody assume I just, oh, copied them, right? Or I don't know, whenever anybody comes in my game room, I want to see this. I want them to see this game and not recognize it. I want them to be like, oh, what game is that? Led Zeppelin, what, what, where'd this come from? Be like, oh, I, I made it. Why don't you go try it? See if you like it. So I need to come up with something a little bit more original than just that. So I'm kind of back to the drawing board. And if you just go in, this is what I did. I went to Google, did a Google search, Led Zeppelin album art. And yeah, let's see what stuff comes up. Well, the very iconic thing we talked about some other interesting ones, the Icarus model. Um, so I scrolled down through, really the, the two that kind of stuck out to me is ones that kind of caught my attention were here, um, the Mothership artwork, okay? It's very stark, a lot of contrast. It's also a style of illustration that I know I'm comfortable like recreating inside, um, um, inside an art package. And so I can go through and recreate this in a vector format that allow it to scale up and scale down however I want. Um, so that was one that I really liked. I think, and you know, I just like, I like black out where it says mothership. So it's a little more agnostic to a single, you know, release, but just overall Led Zeppelin. And I like that one a lot. But then I started thinking about it. Um, I'm in the middle of wrapping up a restoration and play field swap for a high speed, the getaway pinball machine. Um, the very first pinball machine I ever got back in like 2006. And I love it. Didn't have it for more than a couple of years. Then was not able to have pinball for a number of years. Got back into it. Um, anyway, a little while back, like 2012, 2013. But just um, earlier this year, I picked up a high speed, the getaway. Very rough condition, very rough condition. Um, but I was like, you know what? It'll be a fun project. And anyway, we've been going through and doing that. Long story short, when you look at high speed getaway and you think about it, what, what colors come to mind? Well, black and red. So I don't know that I really want to use this mothership artwork because it's also black and red. And I'll just have two black and red machines like in my lineup. That's going to, eh. And I like this, but I don't love it. So I also looked at um, what some other ideas could be. And there is one here that is um, for the album Celebration Day. I'll bring that one up here on the screen. And this one, um, very different. It's more colorful, almost kind of reminiscent of like what Stern did on their, um, on the Ellie version, but not quite. Um, it is different, but it's colorful. Anyways, um, so yeah, it's very different. And I like the colors. It's also a style that I feel like I could go through and recreate if I needed to. Um, I mean, I will need to do that. I need to recreate this and make it to where it's a, a high enough res file that I can take it to a print shop and have it print out for a whole entire side of my cabinet and not be fuzzy, right? So we need it to be something that I can just draw out in vector format so it's lossless. Um, it's got some fun colors here. You know, we wipe out where it's this celebration day. And I think it's something that I've seen a few people do this with posters of this album artwork where they stretch it out. And the bridge and the buildings down below kind of stretch out. The bell tower or the clock tower gets a little shorter and squatter, but it still still looks pretty good. Um, so I think that could work. And I like this style. I mean, if you look at it, you know, closely here, like the Zeppelin, it's still kind of this, um, I don't know, kind of grainy, um, kind of, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, kind of a, kind of a grainy, 
a little more, not grungy, but I don't know, rough looking um, art style. It, anyway, I like it. Um, it's a style that, that, that appeals to me. The colors appeal to me. They're not overly saturated and super bright, but they're solid. Um, there's options to work with. It'll pop. My, my wife likes this one better than the other one. So this is where I think I've ended up with. So I want to play around with this artwork. Now, all this being said, this is not 100% for sure the final artwork for the cabinet. This is what I'm leaning towards right now. I'm actually having lunch with a buddy of mine tomorrow and we're gonna go through and he's an actual artist. He sells paintings and does all sorts of sketches and caricatures. He's big into pinball. He's familiar with what is required for pinball playfield. So um, we're gonna see if I can commission him to help me create some playfield artwork and maybe what he comes up with with the playfield because I really don't know that I'll be able to come up with playfield artwork myself that is gonna look really decent at all. I'm, I'm just, I'm not an artist like that. Um, so maybe what he comes up with will carry over into a related cabinet design that, you know, maybe we throw this whole thing with Celebration Day away. I don't know. But for now, this is what I've started working with. I want to show you what I got um, and then I'll kind of time lapse. You can watch me work a little bit and I'll just kind of give you the tips and tricks of, uh, of what I figured out that I think are important things you'll need to know to go through and create your own artwork if you want. Again, specifically for the cabinet for today is what we're really going to focus on. All right. Okay. Um, so let's get into it. Okay. Um, tools you need. You'll need some sort of a vector art creation editing program. So um, Photoshop, not so much. That's not vector art. It's all it's all flat rastered images. Um, the difference there between vector art and like raster art, vector artwork is something, it's a type of file artwork that has the, um, like the math and everything still inside the file. And so it's easy to scale up and down. You can resize it and it stays crisp. It's not going to get all blurry. Um, you know, like on the TV shows where they get a picture on the, on the security cameras, they say enhance, enhance, and it just blows up and stays sharp. Many of you know that that's not real life, right? Um, but if you have a vector image, which I don't know of any digital recording cameras that can record in vector, I don't think that's a thing. But anyway, if you have vector-based artwork, um, it contains all the mathematical data, whatever. So when it tries to resize up big or small, um, it will stay nice and crisp. All your edges will be crisp. They won't get all blurry and fuzzy. Anyway, that's the oversimplification of it, but that, there you go. So a vector art program, um, Adobe Illustrator is a very popular one, also very pricey. One that I never bothered to learn. I'm not very comfortable with it. Uh, back in the day, the joke is you either learn Photoshop or Illustrator, and I bothered to learn Photoshop back in college. Anyway, um, so there's also one that you'll hear, hear everybody talk about in the pinball world called Inkscape. It's a free one. Um, I've never used it, so I'm not going to be showing you that one today, but a lot of people like it and have said it's great, and they use it, and it's totally capable. So go download that and find some tutorials if you need to. Um, I, I'm a product software designer by day, so I do do some I do um, some UI um, creation and things like that. But again, I'm, I'm less a visual guy. Other members of the team do that. But I'm familiar with a simpler tool called Figma. It's also a sketch and others, but Figma is the one I've been using right now. It's not really designed for this type of um, you know like um, illustration and graphic design type project at all. But it has very simple vector tool, tools I've been able to learn, and they're basic. They're more limited, but for what I need to do. They work great. I got basic Boolean operations. I can edit my curves and my paths and do basic things. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, but yeah, so you'll need some sort of a vector art tool. You'll be able to go through and create your artwork in. There are other ways to do it. You can go through and find some artwork online and you can go into like Photoshop or Inkscape or something else and you can like resize it and try to blow it up. And there are tools they'll try to go through and kind of correct for that to try to minimize the blurriness and all that. Uh, your mileage may vary on if you think it turns out well enough for you or if you create something from scratch or you want to borrow something else. Anyways, I'm going to go through and I'm going to take the time. I'm going to recreate this inside Figma. In fact, I've done that. Let me go through and show you what that looked like. All right, so what you're seeing on my screen right now is Figma. And the image I have right now is one I found online that someone has stretched out to make more like a poster. I have further shrunk and stretched this a little bit to get it um, pretty close to the dimensions we need for the side art for a cabinet. So the size dimensions we need for the side cabinet artwork is 52 inches long, so like 51 and a half, so we're gonna go 52, a little bit extra. It's 24 inches tall, so we're gonna go like, you know, 25, and at the back part where it's tallest, right, on my cabinet, an old Williams cabinet, and in the front, by the coin door side, it's only about 16 inches tall, 15 and a half, so we're gonna go, go about 16, so we have just a little bit of, of extra bleed, okay, for the printing for it to get cut. So that's the size we need, it's, it's a little bit, Awkward, right? As you know, it's not like a perfect rectangle. So what we have right here is really not going to work because if we use this, and I get this to shrink here, like we would end up having something that would end up um, getting getting cut off <laughs> above this line. Everything above this line would basically get cut off, and that would not look great. So we don't want to do that. But this was still it was a starting point. Um, 
since I need to adapt this, a perfect square isn't going to work. I need it to go longer and wider. What is it? I did was I took this image and I applied it um, as a background and started drawing things on top. I basically started tracing all this inside Figma, right? So I came down in here. I said, okay, what's what's like the most background element here? And for me, it appeared that the most background element was most likely um, the the green, kind of this tealish color in the background. You can maybe see the yellow here, but I went ahead and picked the green teal here. And so I started with just a green square, okay? And then I went through and added red above it because there's a lot of a red above this. And again, I had this um, overlaid on top of the artwork. So all my images here or these um, color fills, I had knocked down to like 60% or something, right? Um, and that way, I could kind of see how this image appeared um, underneath it all. If I put this in here, okay. So you kind of start to match up. Okay, about how far up does my green need to go? How far up does my red need to go, etc. Right? And so I did all that, and um, so we started with those colors, right? And then after we got kind of those base colors, then I went through and said, okay, what else do we have next? We have um, these lines over here, right? I've got like these like arrows going up and down. And see when I zoom in how blurry that gets? We don't want to be printing out anything like that on our actual site art. That's going to look horrible. So I went through and I created some red triangles that I then put below this, boop, okay, and filled in on the sides, one on each side, a set on each side, and kind of came in. All right. And then what was the next thing? After that, the next thing we worked on was going through and coming up with the shape of the sun. And so I created this ellipse. At first I started with like a perfect circle, but it was so tight in there to be low enough that it was like, it didn't fill up quite enough. So I went a little bit larger, kind of like along like sunset where the shape of the sun starts to get a little distorted. I figured that would still work all right. So we had this ellipse that I'm using as a mask. So I had two more colored rectangles here, red and yellow. And then with this ellipse, poop, I used that to mask them off. And that way we started to get what that um, what the red and yellow sun here looks like, right? Okay, and then we needed more. At this time I did yellow triangles that are repeated across. And again, they're also being cut off by the mask of that ellipse. And so next thing we know, we've already got kind of that cool kind of look there. That works all right for me. Then we need to go through and add in the rays. Well, technically the next thing I did was I did the buildings and the landscape down front. And this had several elements to it. Um, I mean, I was tracing these bridges. You can see as I kind of turn it off now. So that was like the, the clock tower. And the way I did the clock tower, each one of these, I just, I drew, you can see in here, I've got the circle for the clock. I've got these lines. Every one of these things I went through and I drew. So I have these rectangles, okay, that I repeated. And then we've got rectangles up top. Then we've got these square rectangles that are just like repeated here in a series. So we went through and created all that because again, I was just, I was just tracing what I saw up here and I went from dirty lines to clean lines. I, to, I didn't have to make it 100% perfect. I said this is roughly, looks to me at my resolution, about um, about eight pixels wide. Great, so I'll create that and I will just repeat it and they're all gonna be about 10 pixels apart. Boom, 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 boom. I just repeated them in a series, made it nice and um, kind of geometric. I went through and traced out the outside of the building. So this here is a whole vector with all the different points I went through. And I was not super perfect. This is not exactly symmetrical here, right? Those should both probably be like one more step in. There we go. We're kind of fixing this as we go, aren't we? Um, whoops. And so it's like, still, I went through and I drew this and I made this. Uh, actually, it was better how it was before. <laughs> um, pretty close anyway. I made this pretty close to how um, we needed it to be. Okay. doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be, you know, zoomed out on a poster. It's going to be pretty darn um, big anyway. But so I went through and, and I did all that. Okay. We traced all those things. We got everything in place. Boop. So we traced all these elements around, around both sides. Okay. We have the tops of the buildings here. We have this lower section, different groups of these little, again, these are just like triangles that I repeated in here and then put back to back to kind of make that look. Okay, so lots of triangles. Got triangles repeated here on the bottom, triangles over here on the sides, just going through and making these shapes. Okay, again, nothing super tricky if you've messed with this type of software before, all right? Like, I know if you've never done this type of work before, this already might seem super daunting and crazy and like, oh, and it did take a lot of time. It was very tedious, 
but I, I don't know. I'm a patient person. This is the type of type of work that I can just kind of like lose myself in sometimes and be like, eh, it just, I don't know, I kind of zone out. I go through and do it. So we did everything. We went through and we drew out these different rays. I have lines coming down that then were masked off also. And this is what we ended up with, okay? This is pretty close to what we need to do. And then from there, we're going to bring it into, into Photoshop. And this is now kind of catching up live to where I'm at. So this blue part underneath there is what um, is not going to be actually um, printed on the side of our cabinet, okay? Meaning that that is um, the angle we need for it going, you know, from 24 inches down to 16 inches in the front. All right, where is that file I was working with? This one, okay. So here's our whole entire thing. Oh, it needs to be resized. I didn't resize that yet. So let me start again. So we're over here. I got a couple other ones I was working with. So this is one before. And see how this is like so oblong that it just doesn't look realistic at all. It's, I don't know, to me it looks bad. Hence why we redrew it to be a little more like this, okay? The sun's a little bit better. All right, anyway, this whole thing is still a little bit big. I, I created it smaller and I exported it at a 4X size. I scaled it up four times inside Figma and it came out close. We're at 57 inches wide. We don't want 57, we want, how wide do we want? We want um, 52, 51 and a half. We're gonna go um, 52.5, just so we got about a half inch on each side. Okay, we're gonna resize that. Big files, that's taking a little bit to do. Bingo, bingo, and then, yeah, let's just try taking that. I don't wanna squish it anymore. We're gonna duplicate this layer over into other docs. So now I'm just doing all this inside Photoshop. Again, this is what I learned. And so like when it comes to actual photo manipulation and creating like a final print file, this is what I've used in the past. So, all right, and that, so we got this low enough now. I mean, we, we have a little bit extra height here. We could drag this up and down. So it's like, you know, do we want to just go to the top? The blue cuts off, the sun's not being covered, but then we don't have any of the yellow down below. Or we can raise it up and have the sun cut off some. Like, I don't know. Personal opinion here, I don't know if I want the sun cut off, but I kind of hate losing all the yellow down below. At the same time, that's just, I don't know. That works, that could be a good bottom color. And then, um, let's see, we've got, boop, here's that Zeppelin that said we had. We can kind of put that wherever we want in here. Kind of try to line it up with things. We can go through here and we can rotate things around if we want. So maybe we, you know, do we want to rotate that a little bit? So it's kind of covering those rays. Do I want it more extreme of an angle? Like, anyway, we can play around with this and get this kind of exactly where we want. The other thing here is what about just for our translate? So if we wanted to get a canvas here that was 26 by 16. That's how much space we're talking about. <laughs> okay, so now let's go through, let's resize our image. And uh, work for us. let's undo the canvas. Let's resize our image to 26 by 13. All right, so we always have to go the shorter size. We can get our height to be 16 exactly, okay? And then we'll probably have the canvas um, cut in a little bit off the sides because I don't want to really shrink it or wrap. Well, let's see. Making it a little bit narrower actually wouldn't be too bad. Um, 26. Let's see if that shrinks it. Maybe it makes our, taller, our tower a little bit taller. That's not so bad. That could work. And then same thing. Let's take our Zeppelin font. Duplicate that one to here. Okay. And then we're also going to take this one going left to right. We're going to duplicate the Zeppelin. Ta-da, that's a little big, isn't it? So we will resize this. And let's scale him the heck down. Eh, he can be bigger than that, though, can he? Still want the Zeppelin to be pretty impressive. And then something like that. And then... Our font, Led Zeppelin, is that, top it, is that too big? Kind of covers everything, huh? But it is right there centered. We're kind of missing Big Ben. If I off center just a little bit, then we can see the clock tower through it. No, that's stupid. All right, 
but that's a little big. So maybe instead of 600 font size point, let's go down to 500. It's a little better. Still kind of covering a lot of the tower. Let's go 400. And you know, depending on your program, you can play around with things. We can, you know, we can stretch it a little bit. We can make it wider if we wanted to. Probably not that wide. We can make it a little bit wider. Come on. And then a little bit shorter. We can do all sorts of things to kind of squish it around and make it work. Now it's not covering our our, um, our clock tower at all. Okay. And the only thing left to do then is to go through and figure out the back box. Um, 30 inches tall. The widest point is nine and three quarters. So let's say 11 inches. And then it tapers down to six and a half inches at the bottom. So let's come in and find six and a half. And again, we want a little bit of buffer there. So we're going to do this. And then I'm going to draw a line that's going to come from this corner all the way down to here. Okay. All right. That's going to be our area that we're not going to see anything in. All right. Okay. And now let's take this layer. All right. Now, clearly, this doesn't fit. <laughs> not even close. So we can center it. All right. And that's what's going to be shown. Led Zeppelin. Icarus Angel. What if we do the Icarus Angel? Yes. Just something a little bit like this, maybe. I mean, that's not bad. Or he could be this color. I think I like that better. It's brighter. It is a little. It's definitely pixelated. Kind of blurry looking compared to everything else we have. I need to find a higher quality version, but that I think that could work. So I'll need to play around and find a better quality version of that, so it's not so jaggy and ugly looking compared to everything else. Because like everything else is super sharp and nice looking, but he he is not so super sharp and nice looking. And it kind of goes with this style in here a little bit. I don't know. All right, so that's what the back box could look like from one side. I always got to go through and duplicate that over on the other side. All right, everybody. So there you go. That's the, I don't know, that's a good first take at artwork. I've seen worse. It's uh, kind of me and my mediocre skills showing you kind of the general process I take to go and search things on Google, try to find big sizes, transform and scale things up and down, move things around. Um, the, the important thing is we've got um, the templates now. We can swap in whatever other artwork. I'm excited to see what my buddy Rob comes up with. Um, hoping he'll come through with something that I just love. I'm sure it'll be amazing. Just, I mean, art's so subjective, just a matter of, of which I prefer, right? But um, this could all get thrown out the window and say it was just a fun exploration and maybe get replaced with his own artwork. But at least now I've got the templates of the right sizes and dimensions and everything. We still need to do the coin door. Uh, but otherwise, we have what we need. And yeah, I'm, I'm not upset with it. So anyway, um, thanks for coming along for the ride. Hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully it was a little bit ed educational and... And yeah, we'll uh, we'll catch you next time, everybody. If you have not started your own pinball project, your own homebrew machine, why not get on it? No time like the present. There's so much fun. There's so many people that will help you out. There's so many different areas. I see people reaching out all the time saying, hey, if you need artwork, if you need printing, if you need clear coding, if you need CNC options, like there's so many people in the community now willing to jump in and help you because I think none of us can do every aspect of this, right? So some of us are better at other aspects than others. And then we just, we help each other out and you know, together we, we raise the tide, right? For all of us, we all do better. All right, take care, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I'm...